Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my shop. Welcome to my channel. My name's Keith and I'm your host. Come on in. Let's see what our next video is all about. All right, here's the handle. And this is a spring location. See, a spring is a safety. Especially, you really want this to be on here. One, you don't want to lose this handle. Two, you don't want this handle coming around and whacking you in the nuts. All right, that's uh that's that's a given right there of uh, given pain that's what it'd be given all right um right here is a roll pin and i remember this being an attachment on here because when you change out uh from where this dial normally is up against the surface right up here and then you 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 pull off your cluster here you mount the motor and then you have an attachment uh stack up here and I just want to make sure that we are uh, incorporating everything that we need to for that shaft. So that's why we wanted to come over here and we're going to pull this apart so that we get a chance to look at it. And <clears throat> the end of this stub shaft here is threaded. And I had to stack up a washers on there, I guess, because the diameter difference there. all right handle off okay spring spring sets right in there all right this is normally what it looks like when it's set up in this direction right here so no, normally without any spring action you'd have this sitting like this some people like to go ahead and store their handle backwards like this um of course, well, of course, when you don't have the knee or you don't have that interference, it goes all the way in just like that. All right. All right, back to where we were. And, of course, I moved the roll pin over here already. I need to, I need to be able to drive that out. Okay. So we grab our punch for... 316's roll pin and we grab our hammer okay we knock out that roll pin And that unscrews. This slides off. That's a spacer setting there. All right, we got another set of Allens in here. Okay, there's only two in there. And we gotta pull that key out. I'm gonna rotate this around so I can see that key. There we go. There, I pulled the key out. And I found it. <laughs> All right, now this comes off. We set that down on the rubber mat. Now, 
Now this bolts in here with three Allens. And this is the three Allens that we see accessible. on the face of Buffy over there. Okay, here we go. Alright, now we can see that this is the original shaft here, and this is a stub extension that goes on here. And I believe this threads on. We're gonna we're gonna wipe this off with with um, a rag, and then we're gonna grab a hold of this and we're gonna untwist, and I believe this extension screws onto the original shaft. And then also I want to hold the other shaft next to this one here and see the length difference. Okay, I backed you up just a little bit there. Um, you can look down in the hole there, all right? And then I rotate it around. So that is pinned straight on through the original. I had to put this into chuck and I just put a pair of, a wrench on here and it just took very little. To go ahead and undo it all right this is the dimension I want to make for the end of the shaft because I want to duplicate the shaft so it'll be original you can see how close that actually comes but they give you that spot to drill all right All right, now, now you want to see the difference between this shaft and this shaft that's in Buffy. Now let's go ahead and we'll put the shoulder of the bearing right there. And then you can see the difference between here and there. And I'm just gonna hold it to there and we're kind of measuring over here where the bearing would end up here three inches longer uh, so I know that I got four inches more travel I believe in the knee but the shaft is three inches longer <clears throat> all right we're gonna go ahead and take our dimensions on this shaft here including that key and everything and then we're gonna go ahead and start machining our new shaft for Buffy and we'll go ahead and we'll We'll put this one back into the machine here so that we have operations because we're going to need the, this mill to put in the uh, the keyways and a couple other things. So as long as we have the dimensions for this, we can put everything back together and we'll be able to transfer all of this goodies over to Buffy when we get ready to make the swap out for um, commission. Okay, check this out. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. Um, I just got uh, my replacement Osmos in, and it also came with this boom extension. So I'm really excited about this, and I'm testing this out right now. Um, I'm able to add my microphone attachment right there. I can go ahead and fully adjust it. It's on a good tripod. It's not going to fall over in the shop. Um, and it does give me bird's eye view that I can angle and I can get some shots over my working surfaces that I've never been able to get. So I am really, truly looking forward to using this setup. Stay tuned, next episode. All right, here's a good example. I got the tripod sitting there. I have a plywood backboard just to keep little chips from flying 
temporarily type thing I haven't really made it but you can see the cameras there it's angling down the eyeball is put in the angle and everything else that you want it to view and you're down looking down at the tool bit and the shaft and this is what's being recorded pretty cool all right so this is my note 4 um, my old old note for note 4 and that's what I use to control my my camera and hit record here and of course it's recording and, uh, and then you can see the motion in there on the camera now if I wanted to if I want to move the camera I just touch the screen and then I drag my finger and I drag it back and it's all operated off of a gyro system now my other camera that broke that I just replaced used to surge or send or rock around like a drunken sailor but I've dropped it on the floor for a couple times and and I think it might have might have been the reason it did that but we'll see we'll see how this one does anyway there we go okay let's see how our new camera is performing while we start setting up on this one inch rod we're going to use for that shaft for the vertical knee control all right let's get our pieces in here first we have the collet pushing all right so our collet can go in here we'll get our tube fed in the back side <laughs> we'll put our draw bar guide in the back side. Now we can put our draw bar in here. Okay. Now the collet will go in here. There we go, find a pinhole. Okay, now we can feed our bar in and we don't we didn't run it on the roller so we don't know if it's really true running or not but we will set our collet okay we can set it somewhere right in there right there looks good We're ready to rock and roll. All right, uh, we increased a little bit to uh, 1080, uh, 60 frames per minute, and we'll see how this appears. Plus, we also hit uh, autofocus and uh, kind of see if that made a difference on how we're looking here. Okay, uh, we're just going to face this off. We're going to center drill it, and we're going to slide it on out so that we can get that end machine we went ahead and took a photograph of that before we put it back together and we wrote down the dimensions on it it's an easy way to make a drawing and it also gives you a hundred percent visual what you were actually copying
All right, now we're going to figure out how much we want to run out here. And four and five eighths is pretty close to everything that we need to have out here to do. So this is, I'm just going to bring it out six inches. <clears throat> there we go. Alright, let's set up to turn our diameter, and I think I'm going to change inserts here. Alright, I've made a pass down to here, about 25,000 shy of our distance there we're just kind of planning out our first um, diameter and we'll punch that into the readout went ahead and picked up my this is a this is a rook made to hold an indicator and this is one of my indicator stems but I also drilled holes through a brush and it really makes a nice little blockade for flying chips and then chips just kind of like stay down at the bottom all right um, take a measure on that and we're going to be taking this diameter down to uh, bearing diameter here, which measures up to be about 760 or 782. And we're just going to verify that we're cutting what the readout says we're cutting we actually said 956 and we're cutting about 951 point 951 we changed that out there we go all right <laughs> Okay, this is coming in a diameter about 801. This diameter should be. And then we'll only have about 18, about 18,000 left. Okay, 7.99 and a half or so. All right. All right, we're going to take it down to about 10,000 over finish. And then we're going to go for our next diameter down to its depth that we need to go to. We'll leave a little bit heavy on each of the surfaces and we'll finish them all after we have their roughness uh, established all right let's see here yeah, we're getting down to about 674 and we need to go down to 625 maybe 624 and a half we want a good fit on 5 8 diameter right there <laughs> Okay, we're putting some threads on here, and we're getting down, getting down close here.
we zoomed in to see how the camera's going to act. This is zoomed in from about three foot away. Of course, you can't see down in on the thread that I'm looking at, but you can see in that. Getting close. I can check it with that nut, I think. Okay, it's starting on there, but it feels like it's got about another five thousandths to go. I like that. I think. Alright, we started cleaning up and mounting up our oil system. Got our two blocks on it on both sides. Got our new lines tied in here. We um, started making our own ferrules to go in on the line. The normal line for the bridge ports is about 150 56 thousands or something on the diameter we're using one eighth and we're making these quarter inch uh od diameter one eighth id with a slight little angle just like the original design of ferrules let me get this out of here there we go same original design a ferrule flat on the nut side and and tapered in all right and there everything is working fine on here I'm getting ready to I got to go make some more ferrules and we're gonna go show you how I'm doing that well we have eight ports up here that are gonna come up here and feed this and that's what we're working on now we added in this new line and I got that on eBay for short dollars this mount where this stainless steel um, uh, rubber coated clamp is to hold this nice and secure it's in the same location and then it snakes around here and goes back in just like this did over here and this excess line right here is almost exactly the same shape as this so this is going to accordion in and out and just perfectly do fine um, we re rebuilt our holding chamber cleaned it up and everything else the pump was still good so we didn't have to go into it but we cleaned up the chamber the sight glass and uh, the pump handle and that and the little knob on it and we got all of that it's drying now we'll be mounting that up shortly but what we're going to concentrate now on is our lines that come from here and then go up through this hole here to this this side and the same thing on those five over there going to come up and go down that side all right, let's go make some ferrules. Okay, that's the size of the little ferrules that we're making. 
and we're and actually <laughs> here's here's one that, that's not doesn't have a line through it okay it is pretty it's quarter inch and it's only 150 long we're making these out of old contact tips and we saved the old contact tips and these happen to be quarter inch on the diameter they're copper so they work really nice as far as coming in for a um a, a, a ferrule all right we come in <clears throat> in First, we're just going to trim it off of the end here. Alright, we need to make a 1 8 bore through there. And I did, I just did one that had the aluminum uh, uh, MIG wire burnt in the middle of it. And once I got through the snout of it there and got it leveled off, it drilled through and gave me the 8th inch all the way through with no problem. All right, I use a little bit of Tapmatic um, here because it actually helps the copper from galling on this um, drill bit. And we'll go in the right direction. What I found uh, with copper is come in, come out, give it a little bit of clearance, but keep it wet. We're just drilling through that insert, that contact tip all the way. Okay. Now the bore is done. And I'm going to trim that off just a little bit more because that, that taper right there is a little different than the taper that we put on there. All right, I like to make a form tool. It just kind of comes in and kisses the angle that we need to make that snout. And we come down until we come with a razor sharp edge on our leading of our ferrule. And that's our right diameter. Here again, just keeping it a little wet here, and all we're doing is looking for that sharpness of that leading edge. Now we're going to part it off, and we're just doing them a standard of a hundred thousandths after the uh, major diameter of the taper. Right, that parted off a little bit soon but I take that that excess material right there I got to put it in something that I can hold it like that and then I just take the flat nose pliers off like that I like to take a countersink and hold it in a drill chuck so I get it like that once I have once I have that part right there, then I go ahead and I run it back down on the drill drill bit and uh, we just got to clear the copper off of the drill bit here. There we go. We get about three or four ferrules out of the end. All right, by running it back on the drill bit like that, you kind of clean out the bore. Now it's ready to put the line through. All right, we got about four more to make and then we're done.